Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. If you are into hi-fi, two-channel audio, you consider yourself a music enthusiast, audiophile, music junkie, you name it, welcome home. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. On this channel, we talk about all things hi-fi. And in today's video, we're gonna be exploring do-it-yourself. It's gonna be a teardown video, kind of, of the XLS Encores, more on that in a minute. But before we dive into any of that, I wanna talk about this. <laughs> Operating instructions for your Ding Dong Audio, mesmerizing, OCD compliant, NRD jumbo fidget spinner, complete with Christmas smell. Smells like Christmas or snake oil, I'm not sure which one. Take out of the anti-static sleeve, place on flat, horizontal surface, label side up, place index finger on center label perimeter, push in circular motion and remove finger, become mesmerized. It's actually really therapeutic to be honest with you. <laughs> All joking aside, Peter, you have no idea. Peter is one of those guys, he actually has a YouTube channel. I'll leave the link down below. Peter is one of those guys that just knows how to surprise you and brighten your day. And my goodness me, this is freaking awesome. Peter. You know, I don't know what his plans are with his channel. I don't know exactly. I don't think he knows what his plans are with his channel. But for a while, he was going to be doing some flat packs, maybe considering some flat packs for GR Research. I don't know if that's part of his plans now. I don't think he even knows if that's part of his plans now. I do actually have a flat pack that he CNC'd for me that I'm gonna be building my own XLS Encore and I'll be taking you guys through the journey of those when I get around to it. And uh, the guy knows what he's doing and he does a great job. You wanna talk about attention to detail. Well, I mean, come on, this is awesome. I really do appreciate this. This means so much to me. And it just, it made my whole week. I was just like, this is so cool. All right. So today is kind of a special edition of a teardown video. Yes, we are gonna be taking a look on the inside of some speakers, for sure. We're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be talking about the XLS Encores that you guys have been looking at on the shelves uh, for quite some time. You can see they're no longer up there. And uh, they're gorgeous. And they are, they are an XLS Encore, but they are XLS Encore Extremes. They have been built to the nth degree. We'll get to those in just a minute. But before we do, these, get these drivers up here. All right, so this guy right here, Officially was the first time that I heard an XLS Encore. You can see the drivers have been taken out and I've got them to the side here. We'll be talking about those in just a minute. But what's unique about this particular XLS Encore, kind of interesting, we have our standard binding post cup that we've been seeing a lot in all these teardown videos. It seems like every speaker that we've looked at comes with some type of a cup similar to this, unless you get into the higher price stuff and you finally see this changed out for something a little bit more serious, if you will. And then you have these guys. These are Danny's tube connectors. These guys are based on the principle of low mass, high contact area. That's as deep as I'm gonna get when it comes to getting technical about them. I'll leave a link down below where you can read all about tube connectors. And I have talked about them enough on the channel that I think they're gonna be recognized right away. When you hear them and you hear them in a system like this where you can just swap it out very quickly and hear for yourself, well, that is, as they say, where the rubber meets the road. And then I think it's pretty easy to hear that maybe everything does matter, does matter to a certain extent. If you decide to get XLS Encores, 
You don't have to get tube connectors. You can go with a standard binding post cup if you don't want to buy tube connectors. That is totally cool. They are offered as an upgrade and no problem. That's fine. All right, so starting with the woofer inside the XLS Encore. Uh, this is designed by Danny Ritchie. And this is a treated paper cone material for the cone and you have a polymer frame. This is not gonna ring. You can't make this ring no matter how hard you try. Uh, Peerless of India is who actually makes these drivers and Danny loves these things and they are fantastic. Yeah, substantial motor structure, not the heaviest woofer in the whole world, but this can produce some deep bass. We'll be chatting about that when I get to the review. And uh, yeah, beautiful looking driver, well designed. I'm a big fan of the dust caps on these. They're really hard, so George is never gonna sink this dust cap where I gotta get out the old duct tape and pop it back out, and they're very durable. Another cool thing that I should mention for those guys that are getting into do-it-yourself is the edge of the frame is just nicely rounded off, so you can just flush mount these. These will just pop right into the hole that you've already created with whatever you want to create it with. And you don't need to worry about countersinking it, meaning bringing it down lower into the actual cabinet, which is a little bit tricky, a little bit hard to do. Nice little driver, kind of the perfect do-it-yourself driver because it's so forgiving. It is really easy to work with. Smooth response right away and it's important to note that that lends itself to a driver that is kind of easy to manipulate and work with tweeters, crossover points, things like that. So yeah, that is the M165 woofer, which is offered by GR Research. And kind of a treat for today's teardown is if you wanna know more about this driver and look at a complete list of all of the specs, you can actually do that. There's gonna be a link provided down below and that will take you straight over to Danny's website where you can check out anything and everything that you wanna know about that driver. So I would encourage you to do that if you're interested. And here we have the tweeter inside the XLS Encore and this is a peerless tweeter. Danny has used this tweeter for years. He swears by it, it is a one inch cloth dome tweeter. Get you guys a side shot. So there's the back of the tweeter. I always forget the actual model here. It is a Peerless T26SG. And again, you can click on the link below and check out all of the nitty gritty about this particular tweeter, including measurements, and he has all of the specs noted on the site. Now I thought it would be a good idea if I show you this crossover board, which was inside this particular XLS Encore. And all XLS Encores used to come with this same circuit board. Uh, Danny doesn't have any more of these circuit boards. So whenever you're buying parts for the XLS Encore, you're building your own board and you're doing it point to point. So keep that in mind. This is the older board that used to come with the XLS Encore many, many years ago. All right, so let me go ahead and do the official count on the board. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts in total. And I'm showing one, two, three, four polycaps. I'm showing two air core inductors. And I'm showing three resistors. Where are the sand cast resistors? Maybe they're hidden somewhere inside. <laughs> so clearly I'm having some fun. You're not gonna find any sand cast resistors when you buy the XLS Encore kit, even if you go with the basic kit. Danny, is one of those guys, and I respect this about him, that has taken the time to listen to every single part that he uses in his kits, and he has determined that what he is giving you is the best that he can offer you at his asking price. Nothing in terms of parts is gonna be cheap, typical stuff that we have seen in every single teardown that we've done so far. We can have the conversation of value and what value means in the do-it-yourself hi-fi sector. And what it means is you do have to put the speaker together, the crossover together, but what you're putting together ends up being a sports car. So now you get to drive around 
in a sports car and you built it yourself with your own two hands. And so there is a lot of value to be had if you move in the direction of building your own speaker. Now, setting these to the side, I want to bring your attention to the inside of the cabinet. One thing that you're not gonna find inside here is another thing that we've seen time and time again. Let me just double check to see if there's any poly sheets in here hidden away. No, there's no poly sheets. This has what is called no res, and I'll leave a link down below where you can learn a little bit more about what no res is. The no res sheets are easy to cut. They have a sticky back, so you can cut them in different pieces and just slide them right inside the cabinet. And this basically just sticks onto the sidewalls on the inside of the loudspeaker, and you will knock out any kind of resonance inside of this cabinet <laughs> in a quick hurry with no res, hence the name no res. All right, these were sent over by Mike Lundy. Mike Lundy is not an employee of GR Research. He is a friend of Danny's and he is able to build speakers custom built, right? So this is not like he has a bunch of these in stock and as soon as we open up the floodgates, you can't certainly rush him and buy one and have it at your house next week. That is not what will happen. Mike will certainly build you a custom pair of XLS Encores if you want. You can reach out to him and discuss that. Yeah, let's get this part right. <laughs> and I, I hope that my camera does justice. Unbelievable work on these. And I gotta say, I have really taken my time with reviewing these because I don't want these to leave. <laughs> They're just so amazing in so many different ways. Starting with the fact that Mike is clearly a master woodworker and he didn't spare any expense to the details that he did with these. You even have these fasteners on the bottom that you can use to make your own stands and then fasten them onto the stands, <laughs> which is brilliant. Gorgeous. This hardwood maple is really just a shell and underneath it you have MDF. So MDF with a hardwood shell. This guy was not messing around when he built these and you're not going to find any, any resonance on these guys. They are rock solid. Now there's a point that I want to make. Same drivers that we were just looking at with that old XLS Encore. No difference at all. Danny doesn't offer some superior special driver that costs a whole bunch more money and that's what we see here. No, it's the same drivers, but these sound superior than the ones that I was just showing you, which already have really nice parts. It's not subtle, it's not like uh, are you sure, Ron? Are you really sure that... Yes, I'm 100% positive there is a clear and audible difference that I think most people sitting down would be able to identify within a matter of seconds. Mike is willing to sell these, and he talks about this in this message. So I'm gonna just read word for word so I'm not taking anything out of context. He says, Ron, I may have been underpricing it, but I had this pair priced at $1,750 plus shipping at Lone Star Audio Fest. The exact price of a different pair could change depending on the cost and availability of the wood being used. For example, the wood for this pair costs around $18 a board foot if somebody wanted wood that cost $25 a board foot, the price would go up accordingly. The amount of labor involved can also vary depending on the size and characteristics of any given wood. That is where building to order comes into play. I can customize to the client's preferences and wood availability. So what do we have on the inside of these guys? Let me go ahead and tell you what Mike had to say. Hey Ron, great question. No res damping material on the interior walls, acousta stuff polyfill behind the woofers, and 5 16 inch solid figured ambrosia spalted tiger maple over 3 quarter inch MDF core with solid 3 quarter inch maple front and rear baffles. So the front and rear baffle is a solid 3 quarter inch of hardwood. The crossovers are point to point wired. 
While point-to-point -point wiring is an upgrade over the older pair of XLS Encores you have, it is now part of the base kit as the PCB crossover networks are sold out. That's the same crossover board that I was just showing you. So Mike is aware that the older kits used to come with those boards and now everything is point to point. You have to build it from the ground up yourself. The base kit now has Earth's polypropylene caps, non-inductive wire wound resistors, Earth's XQ air core inductors, and Gen 2 Sonic bypass caps. The upgrades in these crossovers are Sonic cap capacitors, Mills resistors, Alpha Air Core Foil Inductors, Sonic Cap Platinum Bypass Capacitors in the Tweeter Circuits, and MyFlex KPCU Copper Paper in Oil Bypass Capacitors in the Woofer Circuits. Again, building to order means I can use any brand cap resistor inductor the client wants as long as they fit inside the cabinet. For that matter, if they wanted parts that were too big, to fit inside the cabinet. I could easily build an external crossover in its own box. Last but not least, these speakers also have quarter 20 threaded inserts in the bottom for either isolation footers or to allow bolting to a stand. So given all this information, the only question that is left is, what do you get if you go this extreme? And it's my job to tell you what you get, which is what I plan to do when I review these. And that review will be out later this week. So pay attention and make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. But I'm gonna say this, at 1750, if you're asking yourself, Ron, are these seriously gonna compete with some of the big dogs that we've seen on your channel? Are these gonna pick fights with any of those monitors that have climbed up to $2,000? And I'm gonna tell you right now, the answer is not just yes, but I would say this. It will beat most of them in most categories, and it will be a rival to all of them in every category. Meaning, there won't be a clear winner. It's gonna come down to, do you want vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream? Right, there's gonna be some differences in the tone of the speaker that is gonna be dictated by the voicing of the speaker. Both are gonna be good, but one isn't gonna necessarily be better than the other. But if we're just talking about, are these things legit? You better believe it. So, I'll be doing that review a little bit later this week. Make sure you're paying attention, and I will describe to you exactly how these sound. And uh, yeah. We'll see you guys in the next video.